So welcome back, everyone. A week talking about connections, and I am delighted, delighted to welcome Math Potts, a good friend of mine and an amazing human. And he's, he's got on his T-shirt there. It's Be More Human. Math Potts, welcome. Good to see you. Hey, Rob. Great to see you, gorgeous man. How are you? I'm doing good, thank you. Doing good. Six out of ten today. Bit of a headache, bit tired, but you know, reasonable form. So, you know, um, I'm sure I'll be a seven out of ten when I finish speaking with you, good sir. <laughs> Well, so, there's something to aim for. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, look, we, we've um, known each other for, you know, a, a little while now, and we've done a few of these things. I've been super impressed with your work, which really has connection at the heart of it, doesn't it? So for, for our viewers of the Winter Wellness Plan, do you mind just telling us a little bit about kind of what you do and Camarados and, and the movement there? Sure. Yeah, well, Camarados is a social movement. It's which means, you know, we're, we're a movement of people who decide to get involved and pop up all over the UK and actually all over the world now, which is really gratifying. And um, some just wear the badge and live by some principles which help us connect a little better. Um, but a lot of them um, use our resources to set up a, something called a public living room, which is a public space which could be in a cafe or an empty shop or community centre. We've had them in hospitals, colleges. And they're places where you can go and just be alongside each other with a comfy sofa, some fairy lights, maybe a cup of tea and um, no fixing and no need to be a success, uh, permission to be rubbish and just alongside each other. And that's it. And um, they've, they've now uh, gro uh, grown up all over the world now, which is which is wonderful. In, in the pandemic, that was tough uh, because a lot of them had to close because of the rules. So we went online and a, and a camarado in Berlin helped us develop a virtual public living room called Spoon Room, where you bring a spoon and uh, meet a stranger and um, and just have a chat and be alongside each other. And it's worked really, really well. And that's gone into, there's a Portuguese one, a German one, a USA one. So so that's great. But the connection's at the heart of it because I, I in brief, Rob, I, I spent 20 odd years working with people at the very sharp end of homelessness and uh, mental health and other stuff like domestic violence. And the common denominator between all of them was a lack of connection. And I felt really disillusioned that in all the work that I did, in all the charities and when I advised the government and all of that, uh, none of it uh, helped people get that. And I, I feel the two things people really need in life are friends and purpose. And you get both in one big hit when you look out for someone else. Um, you get a connection and you get a sense of purpose. And and that's what gets you through tough times. Yeah, amazing. And um, I love that concept of the public living room where uh, people can drop in, meet other people and, and support each other. And, and, and talk me through the word camarado. Uh, what does that mean? Yes, I think most people think we're a chain of Mexican restaurants <laughs> uh, or something like that. Um, yeah, and, and I, I love all the people who misspell it. It was. It basically came from. Uh, uh, for years, I've been a fan of the poet Walt Whitman, and an American poet, and he wrote a poet called "A Song for the Open Road," which is about the open road of life. And he said, "More important than money, more important than food. When you're on the open road of life, you need a camarado beside you." And so he says, "Come, camarado, give me your hand. Let us away." And and I just I don't know. I just love the concept of having a camarado, and so I started using it. Um, it became the name of our um, organization and, and, and then one day it all changed when a guy walked into a public living room in Blackpool, a guy called Wayne, very tall, bald head, quite a scary looking guy, had been in and out of prison all his life and we overheard him say to someone, uh, listen fella, I'm not your friend but I'm your camarado, okay, I've got your back and we were like, what is? what does he mean? So we bought him a cup of tea, sat him down and went, I'm sorry, what, what do you mean like, you're not my friend, I'm Camarado? Why can't this guy be your friend? And he said, ah, he said, you've got to fix your friends. You've got to sort them out. You've got to do everything for them. And it's quite an obligation. It's a bit heavy, to be honest. He said, what I need is I need someone just alongside me for 10 minutes, half an hour, and we're just looking out for each other. And and that was his understanding of the word Camarado. And he'd started using it as a noun. Yeah. So we had to change the name of our company to the Association of Camarados. <laughs> and Camarado is now a noun with a small c, and it's you and me. Brilliant. And, and it's such a good concept. And I think if you look at the pandemic and if you look at the 
the the effect of lockdown on our work relationships, which I guess a lot of us would have camarados in the workplace because we wouldn't classify them as a deep friend, but they're someone we look out for and we have those chats over a coffee or you know the cliched water cooler chat. And we're getting support there, aren't we? And that has been taken away for a lot of people, which has left a big void yeah. in how we're supporting each other, hasn't it? Absolutely. And 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 Wayne, Wayne said, a camarado is halfway between a stranger and a friend. And it's those relationships we have. I mean, I would say most people are like that at work, aren't they? They're, they're not full friends, but they're not strangers. You know them. Absolutely. But, you know, I think this is where our work crosses with yours, Rob, because what you're helping is is helping people talk about form score, uh, talk about how they're feeling, which gives an opening to have a bit of a camarado. Um, what I worry about is that in the workplace, even more so now in the pandemic, is that's all hidden. It's all hidden. Um, and we're putting on our professional face as we click the link to join the work Zoom call. And we've got our background sorted and everything's fine. How, how on earth do you find out whether someone's got a, a form score of less than five, right? Um, unless you're, you know, working with you guys. Um, and, and I think if we can find a way to talk openly, then people will go, I'll be your camarado. I mean, I would like people to be a camarado anyway. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I do think you never know what's going on in someone's life. You do never know that. And I think, you know, in answer to your, the question you asked there, we have to ask people. We have to ask people how they're doing. And when we log into that work Zoom call, we we have to be more human to to read, read your T-shirt there rather than just diving into the work-related issue. And, it, and it, it could be asking the form score, but it could be say, how are you doing with this? Or how is your weekend? Or what's going on in your world right now? How's your children? And get to know the person because yeah. – we don't have those visual cues that we get from spending eight hours a day with people in the physical space. Um, why do you think connection is so important? And we're, we're seeing that and we're feeling it and people who've never really noticed it for the first time are feeling it. But why do you think social and human connections are so important to our well-being? Well, I've got an alarm going on here. I don't know what it's about, but I'll just keep going. Um, <laughs> If, yeah. I hope it's not, if it's not a fire alarm, that would be the worst <laughs> fire alarm in the world, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Don't worry, it's gone. Um, well, look, I mean, look, if you're a stats person, if you're a data person and you're watching this, and um, then, look, I'll, I'll give you a simple answer. We, we had some very clever people from Sheffield Hallam University spend time in our public living rooms, talk to people, and they found, found, found out that the connection people made uh, made 71% people more able to cope with life, 80% less anxious and stressed, and 90% happier. I, I think the connections speak for themselves. My point, however, is who really cares about the data? Because if I really have to convince you that human connection makes life better, then I, I think I'm just never going to succeed in my mission if I have to convince you. We all know this, but we don't give a lot of time for it. If you know, if I could just tell you that where this movement came from was spending hours, days, weeks, and then 20 years with people whose toes were over the cliff of life. I mean, they're at the edge. They're pretty much given up on life. When you talk to these people, you really hear what matters. And what matters is other people. <laughs> you know, people do not lie on their deathbed or consider ending it and then say, you know, I wish I'd had a better car. I wish I'd had more money. I you know, I, I'd like a bigger house. They just don't. You know, what, what makes life worth living is other people. I mean, it's, it, it shouldn't be news to us. And yet, how often do we exclude it from our daily life? Yeah, I think you're right. And I guess well, as, as we travel through this winter in the Northern Hemisphere um, and we feel more disconnected and we, we were talking earlier about the the sort of festive season and in the uk and we, we do have uh users of this uh plan globally but in the uk it might be difficult for some of us to see uh family i can't really go and see my mom actually um Sorry. so we, we've no oh, thanks man she, she's a trooper um and um yeah we'll 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 do what we can but i think that's difficult right and we have to work harder to facilitate these connections that we need as humans, don't we? And you've had to do that at a fundamental level with your business. But what advice would you have for um, people who are feeling disconnected um, and to, to really try and recapture some of those lost connections? Well, we've so we've got six 
six principles in Camarados. I, I won't go through them now. We haven't got time, but please check them out on our website. And one of the ones that I think people find the toughest, that they're all, they all sound easy, they're all hard. Um, the one that they find toughest, I think, is a counterintuitive one, which is when you're struggling, go look out for someone else. And when you see somebody struggling, ask them to help you. Uh, because when, it's just remarkable when I've um, you know, been sat with someone, I think, oh, I really want to help them, but I, nothing I'm saying is working. When I just say to them, listen, I'm really worried about this thing. What do you think? Within 10 minutes, they're, they're saying, look, Mavs, I'm all over it. Don't worry about it. They're not thinking about their problem anymore. They're thinking about mine. I have basically conveyed to them that they're trusted. They have value. I've given them a purpose. And I've also told them that other people like me aren't coping too well either. Yeah. And so getting people to help you or, or if you're struggling, going to help someone else, it gives you these two core ingredients of a connection and a, and a sense of purpose. Yeah. And um, it's very easy to go down. And, and I know this because, as you know, I struggle with my mental health. Um, it's very easy to go down a, a tunnel of your own misery. And uh, I, I find that very easy. <laughs> yeah. And it's really great to come out of it and look out for someone else. Yeah, tunnel tunnel of misery. Yeah, the tu the tunnel um, visual is is very apt, I think, uh, for when we start to struggle and, and feel isolated. And you're right, if we can reach out to someone and say, uh, "How can I be of service to you when we're struggling?" That will give us a boost. And it's interesting, isn't it? That's linked to the sense of purpose, as you say. Um, so our pillars of form or well being they're all interchangeable. Um, yeah, really, really fascinating. So I think, you know, a great tip from math there, everyone listening, you know, if you're feeling disconnected, do some good, go and help some people. And that could be just write a letter to a family member who's on their own, right, or something like that. And, yeah. um, and, and, and math final final question. Um, what's your score today? How are you tracking? Are you in a tunnel? Are you out of a tunnel? It's been an up and down autumn for me. It's been really strange. I had a, a rather brutal visit by the Black Dogs uh, uh, recently, and then I kind of came out of it, and then I'm, I'm dipping like this. It's a strange one. I think a lot of people are, are, are finding this year confusing. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's maybe what's going on. I mean, you, you've had a, a belt of that. Um, so I think I'm probably sitting around about your score today, Rob, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I think we are seeing that, aren't we? We're seeing the, the cycling of scores uh, much more rapidly. Mine has just popped up, actually, from spending 10, 10 or 15 minutes with you, Math. Um, so I'm definitely now at a seven now. And, um, you know, it, it's been really good to connect with you um, over this year. We've met each other once at, a, at a, a conference we were both speaking at. But I've got to really know you um, on, online. And I've made that connection with my partner on the wellness plan, Jack Green, as well. Jack said to me, he said, we've never met. You realise that, don't you? I said, no way. <laughs> And we have, we've never met physically, but because we, wow. we do, we've been doing this sort of stuff, um, Jack and I have built a good connection. I feel really connected to you. So thank you for sharing your um, your perspectives on connection, which is at the heart of the Camaro Arado's movement. Such a great idea. Um, I'll post a link to it for those that uh, want to check you out um, in the, uh, the show notes here. But Maf, stay well, uh, my friend. Stay connected. And you know, as it says on your T-shirt, everyone be a little bit more human. Thank you. Thanks, brother. Take care.